And there we go. Hello, good evening and welcome to, it's either Saturday night, Sunday night or Monday night. The, the 27th of May is Bank Holiday Monday and I've got no idea. I thought it was Sunday. Did you think it was Sunday, Chris? I did. I did. I didn't know if it was Saturday or Sunday, to be honest, because of BGT on tonight. Brian's got tonsillitis, whatever that is. Um, it's, it, this, is this is by way of what you would call a fill-in show. Um, it's kind of tin your tip, only it's going to be talk your talk tonight, because that's what we're going to do. We're just bringing as many presenters in as we can get, and as many members of the VTTV team as we can possibly manage. We're going to get them in via Skype. So as, you, as you'll be able to see, over there, we have Marco the Van Basten from yeah, Tues man. Tuesday nights. The name of your show is what, Marco? It is Vapor Scene, Dave. It is indeed Vapor Scene. And then... To, to Marco's right, and my right, but everybody else's left, I think, we have the newly quaffed, it has to be said, she's, she's <laughs> newly quaffed. This has come as a hell of a shock to me. I'm going to put her full screen because we're talking about the Mireille Mathieu burb. It's called a burb in Ashington, isn't it, Chris? A burb. A burb. That's where, it, it's a burb, and where they eat herb nerves, <laughs> didn't they, hell, pet? Herb nerves. Herb, the babe. herb nerves for the babe. But hiding away where nobody can see him and being very, very quiet because that's what he does, then makes a noise. We have the other half of, of the Tin Year Tip team and that would be that fella that's on screen there. Now, it's Mark. Good evening, Mark. How are you, sir? Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm pretty good. I still don't know what day it is, but yeah, doing okay. It's 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 whatever day it, it it's whatever day it is it's that's the day it is it's whatever day it is because if, wa if they're watching on video on demand we can say it's monday but it could be tuesday wednesday thursday or it could be any day so we just don't know so the idea tonight is it's it literally is what we call a multi-presenter basically what that means is we had nothing else planned <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're gonna it's it's audience centric so if you're here and you're watching live you type the questions in and then we do all sorts of things and i can see that something's already come through because the team is working it says can you please do a correction to last night's show dudley vape meet is every wednesday at the plaza starting the 6th of june not the 16th do I need to read that again, Chris, or do you want to do it in really posh like you do? Do you do it posh like? I get I'll, I'll do it posh. Posh like. is out here. Basically, what he's saying is he gave the wrong information yesterday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's slapping himself very hard and saying, "Dudley vape meet the Nas Dudley. is on every Wednesday the Nas at the Plaza, the Nas, the Nas in Dudley. Dudley, and it starts on the sixth of June." And not the 16th, after all. So there you go. And that's lazy vapour. Well, there you go. All I can so say that was it done properly. Yes, thank you very much, dear. All I can you say will. is, uh, if you do come up to knees, me, bring a pint or whatever it was you were on last night. And that's, the, <laughs> that's got to be the best way. Got to be the best way. So I, the gist of it is, you sing the questions out, we'll answer them, and we might even play Truth or Dare. Oh, God. <laughs> this is no comment for that. Won't that be fun? Truth or dare? Oh, God. You tell the truth yes. or you do a dare. And you know what our chat's like, don't you, you lot? <laughs> and they'll all be, they'll all be yes. saying, Mark's, Mark's uh, he's a strong lad. He can handle 45 milligram nose hits with uh, two 18 watt atomizers going. Because you can, can't you, Mark? Uh, 15 watt, maybe. <laughs> Nobody's going to like me at the end of this show, you know that, don't you? They're going yes. to be sending the boys around with baseball bats. That's what they'll do. What? Yes, so what have we got? I'm, I'm still looking and I've got nothing. There's nothing there. Not a thing. So is chat not talking to us, Chris? Or is it buggered again? No. They've, they're all sort of aghast at the moment because Pete Dermody... Dare to ask the question, can we have the amendments tonight as we had McCavan last Wednesday? And there's a few oh my gods going on. <laughs> right. I'm, seriously, I'm quite happy to talk through them, but I was kind of leaving that 
for Wednesday, if I'm to be truthful, but I'm quite happy to talk them through. Has everybody seen what I posted earlier, the impact assessment? I, I actually tweeted something about the impact. I'll tell you what we will do. Look, just to get everybody sorted out, I'm going to knock Mark into the background a little bit because I've got a little bit of video that I want everybody to watch. And Mark will be sitting, you'll be able to see him, probably, but we'll set it away. Have a watch at this because it's well worth watching. If it'll work, work your plan. Come on, work. My name is Jean-Francois Etter. I'm a professor of public health here at the University of Geneva. Uh, for the past uh, almost 20 years, I've been working in the field of uh, smoking prevention, smoking cessation. And um, in recent years, I've conducted a couple of studies on uh, e-cigarettes, in particular uh, surveys of uh, vapors, of, of users of e-cigarettes. In the United States, uh, where we have figures for the past years, the e-cigarette uh, sales tripled every year since 2007, when they were first introduced there. Uh, in the UK, they all also more or less double uh, every year. It tells a lot about how people appreciate and like these products. We have one study that will be published very soon on e-liquids. Uh, we analyzed the, the, the content of the liquid and the impurities um, related to nicotine. We, we conducted this analysis together with the lab in Sweden where um, nicotine gums and patches are manufactured. And they did this analysis for us for 20 different bottles of e-liquids that we purchased on the internet. And results showed that the, the quality was surprisingly good, in fact. The liquids deliver much fewer chemical compounds than, than smoke. In smoke, there are several thousand chemical compounds that were identified, and hundreds of them are recognized as toxic. We don't have many reasons why e-liquids should be toxic. Of course, there's a need for studies, but it's probably much, much less toxic than, than tobacco, of course. Uh, on the 7th of May in Brussels, the uh, Environment and Public Health Committee of the European Parliament conveyed a workshop. Mr. Roberto Bertolini made a presentation at the uh, EU workshop that was appalling. Uh, nicotine can be, you can have overdose of nicotine, I mean, which can create m major problems. I mean, uh, both to the gastrointestinal, respiratory, cardiovascular, neurological system. His presentation consisted in uh, cherry picking uh, negative studies, studies that show that e cigarettes are bad, and uh, deliberately omitting uh, studies that suggest that e cigarettes could be useful in helping people quit smoking. So I confronted him on that, and he, he didn't like it. And also cases of malfunctioning that were mentioned before might produce a high level of uh, nicotine, which might, you know, particularly if used by children, adolescents, determine some cases of acute intoxication, which has to be taken into account. If a student had presented such a, a work to me, I would have given him a very bad grade. WHO, after all, is here to protect the health of the public and by taking such an approach they are not doing their job. It would be a mistake, I think, to regulate these products as medications. And if they were regulated as medications, this, this would limit access uh, to the product too much and, and cause many deaths, actually. There's a debate between policymakers who are very conservative and very uh, risk averse and are, are ready to regulate this as medications, and the public who appreciates the product, uses it. Astonishingly, the most vocal opponents to e-cigarettes are people from the public health community who perhaps don't understand what is at stake and just don't like the product because it looks too much like a cigarette. If regulators let the market evolve without regulating it too much and without regulating it unjustly because currently people who have uh, who are addicted to cigarettes are condemned to um, to use tobacco by the current le legislation. These laws arguably kill millions of people. They are absurd. 
because they block every competitor to, to, to cigarette makers. So w there's a need to let competitors enter the, the nicotine market so more people will, will switch from smoking to e-cigarettes and, and this will save many lives. And there you go, that was a result of the funding that's gone into Smoke Without Fire. And that's just amazing stuff, is it not? That is amazing stuff. Jean-Francois Etter telling it like it is. And we've, we've had, yeah, we've had a little bit of feedback that the volume on the vid was slightly faint. That's, that's where it was. We've also had other stuff. Do you want to read these out, Chris, or shall I? No, I will do it with pleasure. Thank you. Um, right, Ratfinks wants to know, Mark, have you had any modding injuries? So that's a question number one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Mark, <laughs> it's over to you. Modding injuries. Um, <laughs> I have to say no. A few minor cuts, things like a little, nothing bigger than the paper cut really, but that's about it. I'm very careful when it comes to tools. I know it doesn't actually look like it when you see the videos, but I am. <laughs> so so it's, no no injuries to Mark then? No. No, I'm very safe. Okay. Chris, next one? Next one came from Vapent. And this is an interesting one. What would be the team's dream mod? Oh, that's that an interesting... That needs a bit of thought, that, doesn't it? That's... That's, that's just a little bit interesting. Is I'm going to throw it to Marco first because he's just been sat there motionless. I thought for a moment you'd frozen. What, what? I'm still alive. You're still alive. <laughs> right, your, your, your dream mod then. Hmm, interesting one. I would like to see something around the Evic type of mod, um, but I'd like to be able to muck about with it on the fly on my iPad, on my iPhone, instead of plugging it into uh, a PC. Right. An interesting concept in and of itself. Um, hmm. on, on, on an iPhone? Yeah, on an iPad or on Android or whatever. Just, you know, we can, we can plug our UVix in um, and we can muck about and do various things, but it'd be just super cool if we could uh, do it on the fly without having to plug it in. Well, obviously there's battery and wireless issues, but, you know, it's a dream, isn't it? Certainly is. Chris, what would yours be? Something I kind of break. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been invented yet. <laughs> you know that I don't need to put duct tape around? <laughs> <laughs> um, other than that, I'm not too fussy. I mean... It must be all the phallic shapes on these things, but they knock over too easy. So, I mean, I love this. I, I really do. But can I have something that doesn't fall over as easy, please? And a hybrid. I like the hybrids, which I haven't managed to get one yet, but I would like a hybrid of some sort. Do you want to... So maybe something where the battery's here and the atomizer's next to it, you know, oh, right. all on one platform. It's difficult to do, but if you put the two things together, sort of pretend that's the battery and something like that, you know, that would just be about that level. There you go, that, but that would be mine. That's just with quick thinking. Right. Yes. It, it's, it, it is a difficult one, isn't it, to try and work out what you would, uh, mm -hmm. what you would want. I mean, I, I, I think for me, um, the more toys, the better. I'm not bothered about puff counts and stuff like that. That doesn't bother me in any way, shape or form. But the, no. but the ability to uh, vary my wattage with anything is, is, it's got to be for me because I'm not that good at winding coils to exact levels. Um, but like, it, actually, the dream mod, the dream mod, would have a Genesis style atomizer that couldn't leak. That would be numero uno. So it didn't matter which way up, no juice was going to come out, but it would feed any juice at 
any wattage without any bother at all be absolutely full of flavor we probably need to take a, a 26 650 battery and still be the size of a I don't know toothpick something like that it was dead easy to shirt pocket but and this is most importantly could not be lifted by Keith that's <laughs> the most important <laughs> part of it there's no way Keith's got to be able to get hold of this it's got to slip through his fingers it's got to be spottable through his shirt pockets all of that kind of stuff what about you Mark what, what, what would your dream mod be uh, for a dream mod um Something that always works. First time when I pick it up. Would have to be the main criteria. But I need a clear display, a good range of power, and something that charges while it's in the house. No matter where we am in the house, it's just constantly charging without it being connected to anything. Radio charging? Yes. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? It is possible, but... Uh, it's not easy to do. <laughs> I, I, yes, I've, I've seen some of this stuff taking the charge out of radio waves flying around, but you would need an aerial about 64 foot long, would you not? <laughs> Quite probably, yeah. you have to loop the whole house, I think. <laughs> well, you know, it could be worthwhile doing. It's not a bad thought. That's something that never runs out of juice. So solar charging, wireless radio charging, all that, yeah, that would go with that. Yeah. That, would be, that would be very canny. What do you reckon of that, Chris? Something that just never runs out of charge. I think that's a fabulous idea, don't you? I really like that idea. Yes. As Sea Biscuits just said, a nuclear powered e cig. <laughs> well, that's that's right up Mark Ross Street, isn't it? <laughs> nuclear power, you like that, don't you? But a nuclear power? Aye. Oh, I, do, I do like a bit of power. Wouldn't it be good, though, if, if you could take the residual current from your skin and amplify it um, so you don't actually need a battery. How's that? Not out. Um, that's a clever one. There, mm. must be, there must be all kinds of different ways of harvesting power from, you know, if you, if you had, you know, I don't know whether you've noticed, but I mean, I changed my car a little while ago, or our car, I should say. And you know what used to be a cigarette lighter? Aye. Isn't anymore. I went, I went to, to push the thing down to take it out because I wanted to plug something else in and pulled it out. And, I, and I, as you do, you just look at the bottom and because it made a canthal ribbon, those things, I didn't realise. But they, they used to be made of canthal ribbon. And I, oh, nichrome ribbon. And I picked it up and it's empty, now in it. And it's no longer called a cigarette lighter socket. It's now called a power takeoff socket. But it just, mm. wouldn't it be cracking if you had a power takeoff socket? sort of thing that you could just drop a standard 18650 mod in and as you were driving and it just sucked the charge up like a curse system while you were driving along and you know, every time you braked it just whacked a whole load more juice into your, into your battery that would be amazing that would be good do you remember when everybody got all excited about the solar charging units yeah and everybody was ordering them all, had solar charging units. And there just wasn't enough blooming sunshine up here in the north to charge anything. Never mind an EC. Well, I mean, you're, you're dead right. What the hell's happened to this global warming? Somebody's oh. been telling lies. <laughs> you're right there. I mean, have you got rain tonight, Marco? Have I got rain? Uh-huh. Uh, um, no. I was looking out my window. Uh, no, no rain. It's been quite nice uh, in South Yorkshire today. Um, I haven't seen much of it because I've been edited today, but uh, it's been fairly nice. It was nice at the weekend too, um, but uh, no rain yet. But I will probably get it if it's coming down from the northeast. No, we haven't had it. We've been lucky. We don't get it until tomorrow, but apparently the folks down on the south west, the left-hand side, they've, uh, they've been getting piddled on something chronic. Mr Sutton will have been, in fact getting pittled on something chronic. Oh, we've got more stuff coming in from chat, Chris. Well, I'm just going to go back to a question that came in a little bit earlier there um, from Egomaniac, saying we had Dave Kitson's five favourite mods last night. How about DD, Cat, Mark and Marco name their top two or three devices? Well, that's a good one. We'll go, uh, we'll go straight, I think, to Mark on that one, because I... 
tried to catch him with a cannon in his hand and failed. So, <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Top three. What would your top three be, Mark? Mark? Top three. Um, number three would be the Megalodon. That was the first mechanical mod that I bought. And I just love the versatility, versatility of it. I can use so many battery combinations with or without a kick, and it just works. Mm. Number two would be the DNA 20 mod that I made. Mm -hmm. Keep it nice and simple. And number one would be the Evic. Evic's number one. Okey dokey. It works. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's throw it across to Marco. Marco, your top three in reverse order, please. Well, you guys have had so many more mods than me, so I'm a bit uh, a bit uh, lacking on the mod side. But if I had to choose the ones that I've had so far, I would say number three, um, just for the fact that it's small, compact, and does a good job, would be the uh, spinner. Number two, I like my MVP. Uh, and I like it because I can put it down. It doesn't fall over as much. It doesn't fall over in the little cubby in my car. Uh, I can whack my iPhone on it or the Blackberry if it's running a bit low. Um, and number one has to be my Evic, I have to say. Although I do have, which is going to be on the show tomorrow, an SVD, um, which is rather nice as well. But number one has to be um, my Evic. An, S an SVD, that, that does seem particularly poorly named really a special venereal disease <laughs> indeed it's a nice little mod actually it's a variable wattage variable voltage telescopic oh I should should be i'll look forward to seeing that tomorrow yeah tune in tomorrow night indeed we shall and right cut you up next top mm, three it, reverse order i find that very very difficult the top <laughs> three um i'm gonna have to for the sake that over the four years which mod has served me the best um, and I'm going to have to go along with Dave Kitson's number one there and put the silver bullet there because I would not have as much flat pack furniture as I have today if it wasn't for the silver bullet it's always been to hand to hammer the odd nail in here and there and despite doing all that it still works and is reliable I can knock it over as many times as I like, and it still works. So that would be my number three. Number two, again, I'm going to have to go with the four years and see which mod that has served me well, and that would have to be the old GGTS. Um, and number one, I'm going to have to agree with everybody else and say it would have to be the EVIC. Although, what I really want to say is e cigs of that genre. I mean, Segeli works on a similar basis. It's a bit slow on the old uptake there, but I'll, I still like it. And the MVP, for the same reason. So I'd be sort of clumping them together. But the mod of choice, as you can see, is obviously this one, which is battered and bruised, but I still love it. So... It, it, it's, it's more of a top five or six <laughs> or so. <laughs> five, five or six or so, indeed. Um, I, I find it very, very difficult to pick a top three because I, I have very, very few mods to choose from. Um, I'm just gathering a few in my hand, even as we speak, to try and, and get there. Uh, let's have a look and see. The, the, these... The GGTS is never, ever very far away from me. It's always around, it's always got a battery in, and it's always working. Um, that's, I'm, I'm not going to put them in an order because I don't actually have a favourite order, I don't think. But the, the GGTS is always up there. Um, I quite like, and this is going to surprise a lot of people, I really rather like the Vamo to put it up in the top three for the simple reason that everybody i think can get a vamo they're cheap they're very very cheap and from that point of view for what they do you can't really complain uh, they do a good job and they do it at, at, at reasonable money after that i'm going to be struggling 
um, because I use all sorts of different things at all sorts of different times. For instance, got a GGTB. I was reminded about the GGTB last night, um, talking to when Dave Kitson was on and he mentioned the GGTB. And I thought, oh, you're back, Marco. Hi. You'd gone for a while. Um, so I got the GGTB back out and I stuck an AGI on top of it. And that's working beautifully. I've got the original um, Z Max, Z Max here, the, the original Smot one. That's doing okay. It doesn't get picked up awfully often. Um, I'm really, really, really rather liking me Dingo with the Zorbas on top um, and another AGI because, yes, I went and bought another one because I do rather like them. Um, but I suppose at the moment, I'm going to, it sounds a bit sheeple, but the EFIC does everything I like it to do with a thumb button. It even tells me the time and I see it's 2126, which probably means we need to go to adverts, do we, Chris? We do, but can I just put right a wrong I have done? Have you done a wrong? I oh, have. Yes. I should have mentioned, and Sav reminded me, I should have mentioned up there at number one with Evic has to be the Darwin, the forerunner of it all, has to be the Darwin. I have to admit that, again, my my Darwin is, is always here beside me. It's always mm -hmm. sat in the, uh, in the studio or... On the desk beside me it's, it, it does kind of work when other things don't sometimes um so yes i would agree with you there so so isn't it a case that the longer you've been vaping the more favorites you've got because your favorites change but your loyalties don't you still like you know the, the equipment that served you well it, it's and, the, the more you've got, the harder it becomes to pick a favourite, especially as, as time goes by because there's more and more of them doing the same thing. Wait, sorry, Mark, were you going to say something there? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, in that case, it must be advert time. It must be indeed. So we'll go to the adverts. And uh, he said, pressing buttons left, right and centre. And we'll be back in a couple, of, a couple of ticks. Two shakes of a dog's tail or something like that. Well, not be long. Don't go anywhere. And we're back in the room, and you'll see Marco's had a makeover. <laughs> oh, am I on? Mar no. Marco's had a makeover there in the big screen. You'll see one Mr. Dave Kitson of that ilk. And if I move across to uh, to Mark, where Mark was, you'll see he's had a makeover as well. And we've got Daz. Hello. 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 There's, there's millions of people, and this is <laughs> this is just to prove the technology works. Because if anybody's interested, that there. 
is what I'm looking at to try and sort out where everybody is. You'll you see me wave a little bit because the camera's and 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 yeah, it's all like I right, fine. It's it's great when you've got it like this, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm not doing anything. I'm just like sort of on the end of all that, and I was, seem to have almost as many monitors. <laughs> it's all good stuff. I see myself one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven. And I've got the new version of Wirecast with the animated icons. All right. So I can see myself four times in there, five times. Yes, I've got you one, two, three, four. I've got you five times, six times, including the telly. Um, <laughs> let's let's blast on with all of this because I'm quite enjoying all these questions coming in from chat. Skype. Skype. Yes. Okay. Well, Kat's in charge of that because I'm featuring this new hairdo. I really do like that hairdo, Chris. It does look it's amazing really... what you can do when you're making a wick, isn't it? <laughs> is, it is, is, is it right that blondes have more fun? No. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> must, it must be gingers then. Must be. Oh, for sure. For sure. Do you have yeah. more fun, do you, Daz? Yes, without a doubt, every day. That's what we're like to hear. So what's what? chat saying then, Chris? Well, we've got a question for Mark, who's gone. Uh, but I asked him in chat anyway, because obviously we don't want people to miss out. It was from Ratfinks, and she wanted to know where his accent came from. So I have confirmed this with Mark. It's a Northumbrian accent, and it's from Amble, a little fishing village up in the northeast coast here. Amble? So that's that question answered. It's Amble. 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 Amble, Amble is, they, they also have dirgs up there, cow dirt burb. The eight herb nerbs, and uh, there's loads and loads of rugged rocks that raggles, ragged rascals run around. Okay. You know, it's <laughs> look at Dave's face, he's <laughs> just completely <laughs> lost. <laughs> now, right, on that note, yes? I'll go on to the next question, which is from our own Leanna Lawless. Uh -huh. She would like to know what is the cheapest mod that the team likes? that they own? What is their cheapest mod that they like? Well, let's go to Daz first on that one. <laughs> Shake what the... you say? Hey? <laughs> oh, just, we'll go straight to Daz, because he's cheap. Go on, Daz, what's the cheapest one you've got? Um, the cheapest mod that I had, which is currently missing, is Bobo. Which Bobo, which we all know Bobo's on there, uh, on our travels right now. Ah. Oh. I know, I know. I haven't heard anything from Bobo lately, but never mind. But no, Bobo is probably um, probably one of the less expensive. No, I tell a lie, actually. It wasn't Bobo, it was the Zagelli Z-Max, which I bought on a group buy. Um, and that was the cheapest one that I've had. It was cheaper than the Lava Tube. Was it? It was. Right. The lava yeah, because the lava tube, if I remember rightly, I bought a black one and I had, didn't have some problems when I received it. Ah, you broke it. I did not break it. That it, was not it me. Committed suicide. Can never prove it. It committed suicide. It jumped <laughs> off the bloody work surface like all your mods do. I admit it. Yes, that's that's very true. And just so so that you know, I I do sit here now with my trusty um my trusty mod holder. So that never happens anymore. Yeah, but does the thing about it is you've got a trusty mod holder. It's not holding any mods. It's not protecting them. No, not currently. It's it's just the one which is which normally goes in it, which is the trusty old AV. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> right, let's move it across to Mr. Kitson and Dave. What's the cheapest one that you like? It's a good question. That I was just pondering. I was just looking at what's on the shelf behind me. The cheapest mod that I like. Um, well, I like most of those up there, really. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bought them. But, I don't know. Probably. It depends how you define cheap, doesn't it? Inexpensive, I think, is what's meant. It came as a surprise that uh, Leanna Lawless asked it, to be honest. You know, what was the <laughs> cheapest mod. But, you know. <laughs> um, I would probably go... Hang on. I can reach for it. And hopefully not knock everything off the shelf. <laughs> I would go for that. Yes. Which is a Gary Dibley Twin 18650 tin mod. Right. Variable voltage. 
So basically, it does everything a Provari does. It, okay, not everything it doesn't give you, tell you your atomizer resistance and stuff like that. But in use, it works as well as a Provari. I think he was banging then out for about 20 quid, wasn't he? It was about that, yes. It was indeed. It was indeed. Chris, what about you? Well, the word mod sort of confines me a little bit. Because when you look back at some of the um, 510s, etc., that we bought, you know, years ago, they were quite cheap, and at the time they were they were excellent. Um, but in modern day terms now, I'm going to go with Daz's first suggestion, and that's the Bobo. I don't like Segelli as a rule. I don't like the delay on it. Um, compared to the Evic, because the Evic has spoilt me a bit. But at the price of it, I love this. It, it holds nice in the hand, and it doesn't fall out as readily as some of the others. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making sure mine's not gone far. And I have dropped it a few times, I'll be honest. Um, nothing's happened to it. This top bit, which comes off anyway, has sort of moved a bit. But other than that, it's absolutely fine. So I'm very proud to see it, me bobo. Well, there, there, you, there you go. Now, again, here we go. Um, the cheapest, the least expensive one, I think I've already mentioned actually, was probably the Vamo in terms of a, an electronic. But the, uh, the cheapest mechanical that I've got is the TS, the, the, the storm, the, the, the telescope storm that I picked up from um, POV, from the POV marketplace. Um, and that, that works quite nicely. It's not in here because it's beside me big chair in the front room, you know, where you sit and watch big tellies, or where Daz sits and watches big tellies and waves his arm at them, and they <laughs> switch on when he doesn't want them to. Isn't that right, Daz? That's very true, Dave, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> So I would think, yes, in terms of, a, of, a, of a, an electronic mod, the Vamo would be uh, down there. And in terms of mechanicals, it would probably be the TS. Um, the telescopic storm from, from POV would be the cheapest that, that gets used a lot. The indulgences, no, switches all went on them. Um, so those, those would be the two of that one, I would have thought. And I know there's more stuff because I've seen it coming up in chat. And the next one, if you go with the next one or the last one I've seen, that's going to be good fun, Chris. Mm. I probably am not because I'm going to get lost if I don't go through them the way I see them here. But there's a comment that was made. You know, when we were asking, it, the, the question was asked about dream mods. Uh -huh. Um, and I think this question relates to that or this statement, but it's from Moonlit saying, I reckon there should be a standard battery thread for the bottom of tube mods so that we could have accessories like inductive charging caps. Now, that sounds a damn good idea, doesn't it, for this dream mod? I think that's a brilliant idea. Dave, what do you reckon? Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> My dream mod is easy. It would be something with about a 20 mil capacity tank uh, that doesn't need recoiling, uh, doesn't need re-wicking, and probably in about the size and form factor of a Super King cigarette. Yeah, uh, 20 mils. That, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, there's, a, there's a lot to be said for that. I mean, Keith, I think, does have it quite right with the old shirt pocket malarkey. Sticking it in there. Has a milliamp hour battery. Yes. Yeah, that would that would be the good bit. Getting all that more power, more juice in a smaller form factor. That would be brill. That would be brill. What we got next, Chris? Oh, I like this question. It's from Pete Dermody. How about what's the worst flavour juice the team have tasted? Uh can I go first on that one? Mm-hmm. Menthol. <laughs> that simple menthol i hate it with a vengeance don't understand why people use it can't bloody well stand it and it spoils an otherwise good juice for me that would be it dave your choice easy rotting shark right. <laughs> oh yes you've had that haven't you i have indeed had rotting sharky juice and uh don't just don't 
<laughs> it's that bad, is it? <laughs> yeah, it really is that bad. Okay, does? Very easy, Diablo logo. Oh, that's a man's vape, that one. That was just horrible. That was the, the worst vape ever. And um, took me a while to get my throat back after that. Yeah. I'm, st I'm stunned and shocked that you would ever come up with something like that. A man, a man of your calibre? I would have thought you'd have been on Diablo Loco. I mean, Mark thinks it's wonderful, Mark Jones. Yeah, I know he does, but no, it's it's definitely not in my forte. It's not, is it not? No. Right, well, we've got to, we've got to move it across to uh, this gorgeous blonde who says she's cat. I don't believe it myself. I think I'm well chuffed with that haircut, kid. It's taken years <laughs> off me. Oh, well, I needed some of them taken off. Um, right, mine. I know everybody's going to expect me to say custard, aren't they? Probably. Um, but I'm not going to say that. The worst I've ever tasted, and there's a few of them under different names, but the one name I know is wintergreen. And it tastes of pure... TCP. It's absolutely horrendous. So that <laughs> is my worst of all time. <laughs> right. Ugh. I think I've tried it once at the Midlands Mini Meet. Uh, last year somebody had some. And as I recall, it, it did it was vaguely reminiscent of the waste products of a pussycat. Awful stuff. TCP, Ugh. Tom Cat's Pittle. It was horrible. Wasn't very good. It, it 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 was it was redolent of menthol with sheep dung. It was just, just awful. Okay. Oh boy, how do you know what sheep's dung tastes like? Ah uh, well, <laughs> now have you ever camped on the moors? Uh, yeah, actually I have. <laughs> right. Well, if you've camped, you've camped on the no, moors. Eating any sheep dung while I was doing it. Yeah, but uh, do you know what carlins are? Carlings. Carlins. Carlins, no. Now, Carlins, uh, I, th I think they call them black-eyed peas in the States, I believe is what they're called over there. But the little, the little, about the size of a pea, but slightly longer, and they're exactly the same colour and texture before you soak them in water as, <laughs> as rabbit droppings and sheep droppings. And when you've been on the North York Moors camping for three or four days and there's a group of lads all together and you've had a few slabs have fallen over water... Sometimes you don't notice when somebody's put a hand full of these things in with your Carlins. Yes, so that's how I know. Well, that's that mystery solved then. Absolutely. I maybe shouldn't have gone there for that one. Uh, <laughs> we need to take a set of adverts and then we'll come back with a whole load more questions. I'm quite enjoying this. <laughs> we haven't embarrassed Daz properly yet, though. We will, though. We there's, will. there's time. There's time. And, and we are... We are Awaiting Mr. Dibley's arrival. If he arrives, we'll bring him in. If he doesn't, we won't. It's his wedding anniversary, don't you know? I think he's been married long enough that he could be still on a promise tonight, so we might see him, we might not. But we'll be back in a couple of minutes.
and we are back in the room with the new version of Wirecast which counts videos down so you'll see it should get more seamless as time goes by it really <coughs> should um let's it should i'm not saying it will but it should shouldn't it dave it should but it won't will it yeah, no it never does never does we'll throw it across to cat for the next question the next question comes from daza what are the presenters favorite flavors well we might as well start with you chris what's yours with me Aye. Ooh. oh again although i haven't changed a great deal over the years it's not like the mods um coconut i started ice, <laughs> i did i started with coconut ice and i have to admit i still like coconut ice very much um but i balanced that with apple and caramel which worked really well as the day vape and then i went on to uh the coconut ice at night time um but at the moment i'm well into fire and ice which everybody knows is cinnamon and uh, menthol and the opposite to that one is ice cream flavor I don't like the custard. I don't like the dolce de leche that's in, in the custard. I can taste that and smell it. And I don't like that. But a little bit of um, custard mixed with French vanilla does make the most beautiful Cornish ice cream vape. And I rather like that. Ah. Well, so I there you go. But I always keep two. Indeed. Well, I think we'd probably better go to Daz next. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious. It's going to say custard, isn't it, Daz? No, custard's my second favourite. All right. My first favourite is cat's apple caramel. Apple gunny? Yeah. Apple gunny? It's the only liquid that I've had which keeps its flavour, and it is really, really tasty. And it doesn't matter how long you vape it for, it does not lose its flavour, and it is constantly enjoyable so it's the ultimate liquid that i could vape 24 7 really yeah absolutely definitely 24 7 i could vape that well that's that's nice to hear nice to hear um i've got to throw it to dave although i have a feeling i know what will be coming dave what's your favorite well it's got to be dy4 hasn't it it's a grower, no, is that? DK4s, it's known as now. I just mixed a litre of it, so it bloody better be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, given given uh, the a week ago, show, sure, yes. I sat and watched that all go together, and I thought, that's what I like to see. Great stuff, I tell you. Uh, this is a 60 mil bottle, look. <laughs> it goes down rather quickly. Yeah, I'll bet it does. It's, uh, yeah, that's all good stuff. Um, I suppose I'd better... <laughs> Get myself well no, what the hell? Uh I think it used to be I was known as the RY4 man. And I still do like a bit of RY4. I invented RY High Five, but I didn't invent it for me. And my favourite is still RY6. It's here. With two bottles of it. I've got a bottle of that that you gave me. It's I still haven't tried it. Haven't you? Oh no, this is RY5, sorry. RY High Five, yeah, no, I, I like the uh, oh. I like RY6. It just says RY5 on the label. Oh, is that the, the Hang Sen one? It's, uh, I don't know. Sure, the bottle. It's a Safer Six bottle. All ah, right, yes, that's, that's, whoops, wrong one. Uh, that's the Hang Sen one. That's Hang Sen RY5, um, which is not the same. Hang Sen RY5, I think, is very, very tobacco y, uh, almost like a cigar tobacco. Whereas the De Kang, RY5 and RY6 is like, you know the tobacco that we used to get? Uh-huh. When you first got it, you started a kit, you got it, it was called tobacco, and it's like a, an ersatz tobacco. It's not perfumey. It's more of a Virginia than a Burley. Right, right. Is, is where it's at. Um, oh, eventually. Yeah, so a, a, an RY, a, a Decang RY6 is more of a Virginia, and a Hang Sen is more of a Burley. I do like quite, quite like the RY High Five. Yes. Yeah, I do like that. I've got, I've got, I've normally got a couple of bottles of that kicking around. I think I'll take that as a compliment, I might as well. Have you ever tried our Y High Five, does? Yeah, I mean, most of the time you've always got to, 
when we're when we're doing his hour, you've nearly always got a tank somewhere mm. with all my high five in. And I've either tasted it or it's lingering in the um in the studio, so I'm definitely uh, accustomed with it. Yes, well, it used to it used to linger, but now that you and Keith are both on the custard, all I can ever <laughs> smell in here now is custard. Yeah, but, I, I gave you a bit of a break though last week with coconut ice and raspberry. Though. Yeah, but Keith didn't. No, he didn't. So what I was getting last weekend, uh, last Friday and last Saturday, when I wanted in here, it sounded like somebody made a raspberry crumble and custard. <laughs> That's all I could smell. It was lush. <laughs> Kat, what we got next? Well, well, we've got a question from Sea Biscuit. Is there anything mod wise? You wish you'd never bought. Uh, I'll throw that to Dave first, I think. Yeah, I thought you might. Because you've got them all in front of you, so you'll... Yeah, I, there's what I've only ever sold one mod. Two, two actually two. Uh, one I kind of regret getting rid of. The other one was never staying. And that was the lava tube. And I got that sort of mates rates off Ben of UKE Liquid at a knees up a couple of years ago. Yes. And it just went. It was, I, I just thought it was crap. I really did. It had no redeeming features whatsoever. It rattled. The, the atomizer thread wasn't set straight. <laughs> so it looked like the leaning tower of Pisa when you put something on it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the lava tube. Yeah. I, I've not bought a Vamo or a Z Max or anything like that because of my experience with the lava tube. I thought they were pants. No, don't sit on the fence. Tell us what you really think. That's just my opinion. Of yeah, course. that's fair enough. Daz, what's yours? I haven't. Um, I haven't actually got anything mod wise. Which I'd... everything that I've got, um, I've kind of used to. Well, to the to the extent of where I've killed it, you know. So um, there's not actually been anything mod wise. <laughs> there is another question which is going to be asked next, which which I can't answer, but not in relation to that one. Okey dokey. Um, mine, you, people might remember a donkey's age ago. I got what looked like a stainless steel ego, um, but at. at Kind of one and a half to two times the size. Took an eighteen six fifty. Yes, I remember it. Yeah, I can't. I, for the life of me, I can't remember what it's called. And it's probably just as well, because if I name it, somebody will go searching for it to see whether. And it it, it was utter crap. That and that um, three <laughs> cartomizer thing that came over from Apollo. That was <laughs> just utter. <laughs> Honestly, it was definitely. It was all of the brothers' height. Utash, <laughs> Bagosh, Pylosh. All of the Hype Brothers, that was, was absolutely shocking, disgust of Peyton. Um, there's not much lately, though, that, I, that I've regretted getting a hold of. Can't think of anything. What about you, Chris? Well, I'm not going to be popular for what I'm going to say. Here it comes. Um, I bought the, the Vamo, um, or Lava <laughs> Tube, wasn't it? Lava Tube mm -hmm. 1. And I like that. That... You know, I had no problems with that. I really liked it. And I bought, um, I thought, well, I've liked that. I'm going to get a Vamo. And I don't know, I think it was a V3. I don't know what it was, but I hated it because it was, it rattled. <laughs> it, it misfired. It, oh, until it blew itself up eventually. Um, <laughs> with a bit of help from me. Oh, I was going to say, you hide it, didn't you? I, I thought, I hated it. But it's a bit like cars, isn't it? They're all different. And if something's slightly off on one, it could be the reason why it doesn't work very well. Mm. But that would be mine anyway. Indeed, indeed. Let's move on from that and see what's coming up next. Because there's lot, I'm saying there's all kinds of stuff here now. Right, well, the next question's from Disco Dares. What rebuildable have you thrown out of the window in disgust? <laughs> <laughs> because try as you might, you could not get it to work. All can, of them. <laughs> can, I, can I take the first one on that? Go for it. The most embarrassing situation I've ever been in. At the last knees meet, Mark Wood brought up, um, uh, it was an AGAT in Agate, which I recoiled like five minutes, job's done. He filmed it and it was brilliant and it was lovely and that was cracking. So somebody says, I've got this SA9. 
And I went and had a look at it and it had a hole. You could have got a double-decker bus through this thing. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a doddle. Absolute breeze to get this right. We must have been on for an hour. <laughs> and would the bloody thing go without hot spots? The minute you got rid of the one at the top, it went down to the bottom. You got shot of that, it went back up the top. And then when you had the top and the bottom gone, it was getting hot in the middle. Could we hell get that blowed thing to wick properly and coil properly? And in the end, I just had to give up and say, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I just couldn't understand it. it. It really got up my nose and made me look a complete and utter, and here's the phrase, tit. As we used to say between us before, it was definitely everybody holding a piece of paper up saying, Dawn, you tit. And I felt a right plonker. <laughs> I can see you nodding in agreement there, Mr. Kitson. Which ones had you going? Well, I don't think there's any particular atomizer that's put me into that frame of mind because they can all do it to me at any time. Uh, sometimes I'll pick up any of the, the atomizers I, I, I regularly use in the last month or two, the Fogatti and the AGI. And some days I can just re-wick, recall them in a few minutes, put it all together, done. But I, I bought some ribbon wire the other day. <laughs> yeah, it arrived on Friday and uh, the Fogatti's over there in bits. It can get stuffed until it learns to behave itself. <laughs> <laughs> that damn near if it if it wasn't so expensive it would have gone out the window <laughs> was that was that uh, was that with the ribbon wire the the, the, the ribbon canthal uh, yeah I, I i tried the fagatti and i thought no okay fair enough because the fagatti it, it's a bit sort of finicky anyway isn't it because you've got the really small narrow diameter wick mm. yeah so i thought okay i'll try the agi uh so at this point neither of my favorite atomizers are working and in the end, I just sort of stuff it and went back to some round canthal on the AGI. And the Fagatti's over there waiting for me to forgive it. Indeed, indeed. And we've, we're going to have to go to Daz, of course, um, because Daz and his wicking abilities are legion and legend <laughs> or leg end. We're not sure which. So what about you then, Daz? Which one, which one have you nearly the, thrown out? The worst I did throw it out, I threw it out the back door into the garden and it's still there was that stupid Dominator tank. <laughs> yes, I remember them. Do you remember it? I and do. It, it was like when, when all the rebuildables were first coming out and it was the most complicated thing to look to wick. And I I just walked to the door and it's like Disco does a site because I walked to the door and I flung it far and wide in the garden and it's still out there somewhere. Yes, I well, I well remember that happening because you, you came on Skype. <laughs> And, and seriously, I learned some new words off Daz. Uh, <laughs> and they weren't typos either. He meant them exactly the way he said them. Look at that, look at, yeah. look at that face. I think that's where custard was invented. As, yeah, as, a, as a swear a swear word. Yes. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Chris, what about you? Which one's flummoxed you? Um, the one uh, drives me do, Lally, is on me little tree here. That one, and it's the cyclone. That does my bloody head in. <laughs> um, it's wicked probably a couple of times, and the rest of the time it seems you put the juice in, it all comes out again. Uh, it, it just has me bamboozled that. But it would appear by looking at chat that their winner in chat is the Arga T series. Oh, God, don't say that, because I'm wicked one on... He's wicked. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, I'd quite forgotten that. Daz is doing that live on Thursday, aren't you, Sunshine? I am, yes. <laughs> oh, that'll be brilliant. That'll be brilliant. And believe it or not, Mark O uh, has just done the uh, the cat thing. He's, he's, he thinks he's you, Chris. All right. He's come up and said, one minute, Dee Dee. He's right. In fact, we're... Now running over time, I'm afraid. Are we? Oh, so dear. Can, I, can I just, the very last question here would be Vapent, Worst Vape Gear of the Year Award. I'm going to have to give that to the Argus series, according to chat. Chat reckons the Argus the worst. They do. Well, we've got the best chat on the planet. I think we'll all agree with that, won't we? Oh, yes. Heads nodding and stuff like that. And we're, and we're over time. 
we're over time so we've got to go i cannot believe how quickly this hour's gone and mr dibley i'm looking in skype and mr dibley is not with us so his anniversary is obviously going extremely well which is nice to hear but i don't know what that means dave under the thumb all oh, right under the thumb is that what it is well that's fair enough you've got to let the lad have his anniversary haven't you you've, you've got to do it you've got to do it um so we've got some some bye byes to say uh, I, I need to say thank you to mark and mark all for coming in and starting the show away with us it's lovely to have as many presenters as we have i'm going to say thank you to daz thank you daz no problem i'm going to say thank you to dave thank you dave cheers dave i'm going to say thank you to cat thank you cat it was a pleasure and uh, and and fucking there you are and find the right button dave <laughs> i'm going to tell you something since i've set this new system up the ipad hasn't flattered once tonight not once not once it's been spot on it's working dead good i'm we're, dead now. we're getting there we're getting there ladies and gentlemen it has been i have to say a great pleasure to have been with you tonight i'm not going to play out on the on the vta talk credits or anything like that what i'm going to play out with is an advert for something that's happening in june if you can get up into the northeast how are you up and come and spend a bit of time with captain sav and daz and me and dave and in fact i don't think there's anybody on the team that's not coming it's going to be yes and get crusty lush lighting out so we'll see you on the 29th at least what cat's done because it's brilliant we'll see you there thanks for sticking with us see you next time Ta-da! Do you know something? There are times when you think to yourself, Dawn, just get the bloody thing right, will you? And of <laughs> course, I didn't. So I shall put it now to do the job right and we can all say bye-bye again. So, good night, everybody. Cheery bye. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.